<laughs> I still want to hear like uh, some the, the, more about Jonah and the whale because I don't think I actually ever heard ha- heard or have read the the the, the Bible verses like so like the, the reveal. Do you want me to tell you uh, Jonah? Um, no, because I I know the basic story. I, 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 but 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 I want to. I, I, are you prepared to tell the story of Jonah? I, <laughs> I know, I know, I, I know enough about Jonah you. to 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 say it. Maybe you can fill stuff in. So basically, Jonah is was one of those prophets, right? Where prophets had a ton of power back then. They were just God's messengers, and so God went to Jonah and said, "Hey, I need you to go to Nineveh and tell them that literally everything they're doing in their lives every day is evil, and if they don't stop, I'm going to destroy this entire city and kill all of them." and Jonah goes, honestly, there's not a good track record of people who show up in Nineveh telling them not to do this shit. <laughs> like, almost, like, literally, yeah, all of them die. They all get crucified or murdered or something horrible or drawn and quartered. Like, I'm not going to go be that guy in Nineveh. Screw that. And so, obviously, Jonah is like, I'm running away. I'm running away from God and from home. And so he goes down to the docks, pays a fee to get on there, doesn't fully explain who he is. Uh, they, they know he's a prophet, but they're not of the Judeo, the Jewish, Jewish religion. And so they don't really care. You know, they're doing their own thing. They say, all right, come on board. He hops on board. They start sailing across just away from Nineveh. He doesn't know where he's going. He's just trying to get away from Nineveh. They get out there in the middle of the waters and the, the most heinous storm breaks out that to the point that even though Jonah is down below, everybody up top is throwing a fit. They're freaking out. They're all like weathered sailors trying to survive. And Jonah's down there sleeping. And so someone comes down there and goes, Jonah, you're sleeping. Like, this isn't, you know, a fucking Ramada 2,000 years from now. you got to get up here and help out. <laughs> like, this is getting out of control. Come on, come on. And so he goes up there, and the whole time it's like, it's like Jonah is the guy who clogged the toilet that nobody knows it was him, and he yeah. is trying to help clean up the mess to where he's like, you know, he knows it's him, and he's, he's like, yeah, it is totally gross. Like, what, who did this? And, like, trying to clean it up. <laughs> And he's trying to help, and eventually they're like, uh, they they get clued in a little bit more because they realize Jonah, you you ran, so you you were running away from responsibility with your God, like you had to do something for your God, and you said no, and you ran away, and now you're on this boat with us <laughs> in the ocean. You did that, and Jonah's like, I know, like hindsight's twenty twenty. <laughs> 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 and so Jonah is like, I'm, I, I'm so sorry about this, guys. Like, I, I'm still a man of my God. And and so, you know, we got to we got to we'll, we'll do we'll work on something else. You know, let's throw everything overboard first. And so they start throwing everything overboard that they don't need to survive for like one more day to get to shore. It's still not enough to keep them afloat. And so they start casting lots, which is just rolling dice to see who is going to be the person that they throw overboard because they have run out of weight. And they have to get this. It's either one of us dies for sure or we all end up dying. And so they cast lots. And as they're doing it, Jonah's like, stop. I'm jumping off the boat. This is my fault. As soon as I jump off, you guys should be okay. God wants me, not you. And they're like, like doing that thing of like, oh, man, are you sure? Like, hey, like, please don't. No. <laughs> hey, you come back here, Jonah. Don't you make us twist your arm. You know, as he's like <laughs> jumping over into the water. And so he jumps over into the water. Instantly, instantly storm subsides stops what happens beneath the walkers that you don't know all the people that were on the boat are just you know they continue about their merry way having been basically transitively proselytized to that the jewish god is the true god and so they and scary you know, and very very frightening which is important in tribal gods mm. they go on out they go on out jonah's in the water god sends a giant fish not a whale because they didn't know that whales were not giant fish they sent a giant fish Swallows up Jonah. That's the part that everybody's familiar with. For three days and three nights, he lived in the fish's stomach. Basically, in like, if you look at ancient drawings of this, you see what they imagined these beasts' stomachs to look like. Almost like uh, like Woody's East Sunroom is what one of these <laughs> things look like. Like just a very nice, spacious, you know, not too many organs, you know, mucking up the works, crowding it. It's just very, very nice. And so right. he stayed there. Three days and three nights until eventually the fish vomits him back up pretty much right where he left off as a way for God to be like, oh, look who's back. <laughs> and so he throws him up. God tells him again. He goes, hey, Jonah, so we're not, we're not going to get into stuff. We both know what you did. You tried to run away. Like, I figured you knew I was God and I would find you. Like, this, this is a lesson that you should have known. You are a prophet. Um, seriously, though, 
I need you to get to Nineveh and tell them that everything <laughs> that you're doing is going to cause them imminent death. I will destroy them if they don't stop having sex and sacrificing animals to Baal or whatever, you know, other gods that they were, you know, golden calves and the like. And this time, Jonah's like, I, I have no option. I got to go. I got to go to Nineveh. So he goes to Nineveh. As he gets there, um, this is almost like a, a bit of a Shyamalan twist to this story. He goes in, gets up on his pedestal, shaking so nervous because he knows what happened to every other person who goes into Nineveh and says, right, like, get, like, it'd be like going on Bourbon Street and trying and like stealing beers out of people's hands. Like, it's not going to happen. Like, you're, someone's going to, you know, bottle you or something. And so he gets up there, starts spreading the word, saying, guys, if you don't stop, God's going to kill all of you forever and your city will be gone. Mir miraculously, all of them look around and almost have a communal like, well, we had a good run, didn't we, Nineveh? Like, we <laughs> really got raucous, quite a bit of debauchery, sex, animals, the whole nine, you know, but let's, let's call it quits. This is the same guy who got swallowed by a whale, according to that other fisherman who, you know, we all trust Jeff, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so, and so then they all actually listen. The whole city of Nineveh takes it to heart and says, we are going to follow God. We're going to get rid of this sin. And so at the end of it, Jonah comes out looking like a real retard because the whole time God knew that Nineveh was going to come around. And it was almost like it was a test for Jonah's faith, you know? But it does seem like they only came around because Jonah defied God and, and experienced the whole whale thing and, and let some, some Geneva or wherever the fuck people see that God was real, right? Ah, but you can't look that far into it. God cheated his own system. Like, like he, he's up there like, no, I'm not going to fucking make any magic for you to see so you'll worship me. Well, I might yeah. this time, though. Just, uh, maybe this time. It's, he, he's ridiculous like that, that God. You know, he's always doing the pulling hook. Because if he really wanted us to sign on board, right, he, all he's got to do is show up. Like, I, I don't even need, like, a seminar. Like, like, this doesn't have to be, like, a Tony Robbins thing where it goes on for hours and I'm in the audience like, yeah, he's really winning me over. Like, I need a paragraph from this guy. Yeah. Just just make a make an appearance, be like, float down. <laughs> How are you he's pulling gonna... all this out, though? Like, like where, like, did you, like, do you, like, into Bible study or did you go to a, a like, what? How did you just pull that out? Oh, uh, these are things so Taylor knows. I went to, I went to a private school, like a religious school for a lot when I was younger. And so I knew, I know all the boilerplate tales and mm. such, cause I've been told them so many times. Yep. And I, as I was like in mid teens, late teens, I got more into like looking into it, trying to figure it out. And so I just like read through the Bible and, and you know, you pick a lot of it up when, when you read it. And then yeah. if you actually get an interest in it, it's like, this is, you know, these are pretty interesting stories. It, like, I don't know dinners. any of it really, or remember any of it, I guess yeah. you could say. So that you could be making you for second most knowledgeable. In the yeah. podcast, <laughs> you right? have coloring books for this stuff. Like you, you could, really hammer home these points and the reason you could be making this. shit up for all I know, but you said it was such conviction uh -huh. and like, like just your like pacing on it and everything. I'm like, Oh yeah, may, well maybe, maybe that did happen. 